welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to be installing Ubuntu Studio on the desktop PC I recently upgraded with a new motherboard and Pentium Gold processor. Ubuntu Studio is a creative Linux distro which comes with lots and lots of creative software pre-installed. And indeed, I'm going to be editing this video on the desktop PC with the Pentium Gold processor using Ubuntu Studio and the installed software. So, let's go and get started. Right. As you may recall, at the end of the last video, we'd just finished installing a new motherboard with a Pentium Gold processor in this PC, and I'd installed Windows just to run a few performance tests. But it's now time to say goodbye to Windows and hello to Ubuntu Studio. So let's run up Google Chrome, and we'll go to the uh, Ubuntu Studio website. There it is waiting for us. And, uh, here we are, a fantastic website for a fantastic distro. I love all the creative stuff going on down here. And you can see under features here, it's very much focused towards all the creative stuff, audio, graphics, publishing, etc. This is basically an operating system with lots of curated applications for doing creative work, as we will see. So let's go to download, where we'll find there's various versions available. In particular, there's Ubuntu Studio 20.04, the April 2020 long-term release version, but I'm going to use here Ubuntu Studio 2010 from October 2020, which has nine months support, but which also has the KDE Plasma desktop, as you can see. And I'm going to use this because all future editions of Ubuntu Studio will use the KDE Plasma desktop. The last one to use the XFCE desktop was Ubuntu Studio 20.04. And I would point out I'm making this video at the end of March and into April 2021. So by the time this video is posted, Ubuntu Studio 2104, the April 2021 edition, will just about be coming out, which will be just like the version over here, but I'm sure even better. It's also worth pointing out there is something called Ubuntu Studio Installer, which allows you to use all the applications pre-bundled in Ubuntu Studio with any other official Ubuntu flavor. So if you're running a version of Ubuntu, you want all the applications which are created here installed, you can use the Installer. That's a nice feature. Anyway, I'm just going to do a direct download of Ubuntu Studio 2010. There we are. In fact, I've done it already. It takes a while. It's quite a big file to download, so I haven't got to do it again. So I'll cancel on that. And as you might have seen on the desktop, I've installed the Lena Etcher, which I'm going to use to write that image file to a USB drive. So we'll just select our file. There it is. We'll select a USB drive. I've got one connected to the computer. There we are, and select. And we'll now flash to write ourselves a bootable USB drive from which we can install Ubuntu Studio. And uh, there we are, it's finished. We'll resist the temptation to reformat the drive as Windows wants to do. Get rid of that. And we can now close down Windows for a final time and restart the computer. And I'll press F11 to get to our boot menu. There we are, and we'll boot from the USB drive. And select first option there, I think. That'll be OK. And here we are, we booted into Ubuntu Studio from the USB drive, where I'm going to go straight to install Ubuntu Studio. We want it on the machine on the SSD. Here is the installer, which looks uh, pretty frantic, doesn't it? It's doing something exciting there. This should be fairly straightforward, so I'll go through this pretty quickly. Pick my uh, language there. Continue. Uh, that looks OK for my time zone. Uh, English UK also is OK. And then here I'm going to select Erase Disk. We're getting rid of Windows and replacing it with Ubuntu Studio. It now wants some account details. There we are. And hopefully we can now just click on Install. Yes, we want to do it. We absolutely do. We'll install now. And there we are. It's finished. That was a fun and super painless. So we can now just restart now by clicking Done. And of course, we need to remove our USB drive. And now we can just press Enter. 
And here we are, our computer has rapidly transitioned from running Windows 10 to running Ubuntu Studio. What was my password? I hope it was that. Looks like it was, which is a bit of a relief. And here we are, running a fully installed version of Ubuntu Studio. And as usual in these videos, I'm now going to make a few changes to configuration so things will read better on video. And I'll come back after that and we'll take a closer look. Greetings. Here we are back in Ubuntu Studio. And if I go to the menu and go to computer and down to a Info Center, you'll see we're running here on our Pentium Gold G6400 CPU. We've got eight gigabytes of memory, some of which is used for our Intel UHD Graphics 610. And you can see we're running the KDE Plasma desktop here in Ubuntu Studio, which is always a lovely Linux desktop. And we've got a lot of control of it. We go down to uh, system settings, all sorts of things we can change. We go, for example, to say workspace behavior and maybe a desktop effects. At the moment, if I move a window, you'll see it goes transparent. I don't particularly like that, but that's not a problem. I can just go down here and we can find where is a transparency is somewhere down there, translucency, we could turn on off, but we could turn on, for example, wobbly windows, apply that. Now, if I move a window, it wobbles. I, of course, wouldn't turn that one either, but there's all sorts of things you can adjust here if you wish to. And the only thing that's weird is we've got hundreds of controls for setting up the KDE Plasma desktop just as we want it, except we haven't got a control for the thickness of our scroll bars, which are ludicrously small. You can apparently go into the CSS code for the theme and edit those. I might have to try that later on. Anyway, let's also look at the fact we've got settings here specific to Ubuntu Studio. If we look into uh, applications and settings, you'll see, for example, we've got Studio Controls. And this is really nice to see. This basically is helps you set up the system to do particularly good audio work, low latency audio work, as you can see here. Fantastic audio setup screen with everything brought together so you can run things like the Jack audio server without any difficulties, setting up all different devices. Really very handy indeed. Great little mixes and things all available. You don't normally get this much control of audio in Linux, at least not out of the box. And this is all here so we can run as easily as possible all the pre-installed applications. And if we look under applications here, we've got the normal sort of stuff you would expect in the Linux distro, utilities, office applications, internet stuff, things like that. But the key things here really in Ubuntu Studio are sitting at the top. We've got for video, reasonable number of pre-installed applications, blenders there for 3D modeling and things like that, compositing, that type of stuff. We've got the Caden Live video editor, OBS Studio for streaming, a slow motion utility, etc. And then we've also got under graphic design, a lot of pre-installed applications, quite a few utilities, things like a scanning utility there, various photography utilities, things like dark table for looking at images. And then we've got bigger packages, Blender appears again. We've got GIMP for doing Photoshop style editing, but we've also got down here, other stuff pre-installed. If I can grab the scroll bar, Inkscape vector-based graphics, lovely package Inkscape. Another fantastic package is Critter, which I've covered on a video on my channel before. And also things like MyPaint, which is a, a beautiful package. The first time you scribble in MyPaint, you can see this is going to give you a great real media feel digital painting experience. And uh, we will, of course, uh, get rid of that. But the real jewel in the crown of Ubuntu Studio sits under audio production, where there are masses and masses of things here. Utilities, as you can see, effects already here for us. Instruments, if you want to make music and do other things with audio on a Linux-based system, it's just all set up for you. It's really, really cool, this. And uh, mixers and card controls, you can see there as well all pre-installed. You could, of course, install all this stuff yourself on any Linux distro. It would just take you time to find it all and try it all out and make it work together. But here, it's there for you. We've got things like the Ardor Digital Audio Workstation, which I've never worked with. I really must get into this because I hear great things about Ardor for editing and mixing audio. Looks a beautiful package. It'll come up there. I'll just bring it up full screen, works like that. And we've got a fantastic editor and mixer which, as I say, I must get into. It's on my list of programs to really spend some time getting into, but I haven't actually done it yet. I think we'll delete this for now. Also here under audio, 
We've got loads and loads of synthesizers, drum kits, things like that, all sitting there waiting to be used. I particularly like the hydrogen drum machine. I can't show you everything here, but let's look at hydrogen because I just like the hydrogen drum machine. And this allows you to build it very quickly, lots of great percussion tracks. So for example, we could take, I don't know, um, a stick there like that, and maybe a couple of hand claps. What else should we use? A cowbell, gotta use a cowbell, haven't you? And uh, like that. And we'll also have, maybe have a splash on the end. And if we play this, As you can see, it's very easy to set up nice little patterns, which you could then put together at the top here and build up all your great percussive sequences. So, as you can see, Ubuntu Studio comes cram-packed with lots of creative applications, all waiting to be experimented with. Right. I told you I was going to be editing this video in Ubuntu Studio here on the Pentium Gold PC, so I thought I'd show you the packages involved. And the first one is Blender, which I've been using for compositing because the introduction and indeed the ending of every Explaining Computers video is a green screen composite. So I did the introduction down here in Blender. That's just a make Blender refresh itself. There we are. And you can see here the opening shot of the video you're watching right now. Let's just zoom that down, which is not right for the composite, but just to show you what is going on. And as you can see here, we've got a green screen clip of me which is feeding into a keying node here in Blender, which is up then feeding into a transform node to just move me around on the screen, and then feeding into an alpha over node, which also has going into it the background, and there was another one which also brings in the caption, which we can see there. So this is node-based keying in Blender, running perfectly happily here on the Pentium Gold PC, and I think with that we'll leave that there. I can't possibly explain to you everything that's going on here in this video. All I'm trying to show you is that you can do this kind of work in Ubuntu Studio on a Pentium Gold PC, but uh, let's uh, not save that. I've also been doing audio work. We go to Applications and Audio. I've been using Audacity to edit the audio for each segment of the video. Let's just bring in one of those. I always have to clean up audio for every part of the video. I always separate audio and video as soon as I can in, in production, and then they go back together on the editor right at the end. But this, for example, is the opening to this video. Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Have you got a sense of deja vu? So have I. There we are, it's happening all over again, and we'll uh, get rid of that. I've also been doing some captions, and you might imagine I've been doing my captions in, for example, GIMP or maybe Critter. I normally do them in Photoshop, but I find GIMP and Critter have very poor text handling, at least compared to Photoshop. So what I've been doing here, which I haven't done before, should have thought about before, was using Inkscape over there. And so I've set up the captions in Inkscape, which has got fantastic font handling. Let's just bring in one of these. This is the uh, Ubuntu Studio URL, as you can see. And this is simply set up, we'll look at document properties, as a 1920 by 1080 pixel document created in Inkscape and exported as a PNG to use in the final video edit. And talking of the final edit, this has been done in Caden Live, as uh, you might expect here. Let's go down to video production and open up Caden Live. There we are, Caden Live version 20. If we just bring in the edit, this is the film you have been watching. And here we are, we've got it in a Caden Live. It's just exactly what you've been watching, unless of course I've been making tweaks in the gap between me recording this segment and exporting the final video. But as you can see, everything's working fine. Let's just a full screen that. You can see things play back perfectly well here on this Pentium Gold PC with its uh, Intel 610 graphics. We've got no fancy graphics card here. We've got an eight gigabyte RAM PC. Everything is working very well indeed. And now let's just go across there. There's our little caption we were just talking about. Coming into the shot, everything here is working fine. And, oh, I know some of you like to see the whoosh. Shall we have a whoosh coming up? And we'll take a closer look. Yes, that was a whoosh. I know some of you enjoy hearing the whooshes. Anyway, I thought the final thing I'd do here is to show you how rapidly we can actually export things out in the Caden Live. You can see it works very fluidly as a video editor, but you might be thinking, how long will it take to render out the final film? And of course, I've not got the final film yet, but I've got about 10 and a half minutes of it here. So I've set up in rendering a, a script to render out what we've got so far. So let's uh, start that script. 
there it is, it's having a think, it's going to render out what's on the timeline. So we'll leave that going and come back to it in a second. And here we are, it's nearly finished. Five seconds and less to go. It's all, all down to two seconds. How long is it going to take to render out our clip? That's pretty good. Four minutes, 28 seconds to render out about 10 minutes, 30 of video. That is a perfectly reasonable result, I think. And uh, is that a link to the final file? Oh, it is, look. There we are. There's the film, isn't it amazing? We've gone, uh, we've gone back to the, uh, the start of the video. This is very strange indeed. And uh, I think we've absolutely proved here it is possible to edit a video, a 1080p video, using the software included in Ubuntu Studio, all running on a Pentium Gold PC. Ubuntu Studio is a very nice Linux distro, which combined with even fairly modest hardware like the Pentium Gold PC we've been running it on here, can be used to produce very nice, very effective, creative results. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.